a couple of days ago, I did my scouting video. I said things were pretty dire, things were pretty bad. We only had five scouts. I was uh, quite scathing in my assessment of the recruitment uh, policy, the training facilities, that sort of thing. I'm afraid to report that things are a lot worse than I originally thought. I have had, I've had unprecedented contact, like, like no other video I've ever done, to be fair. I've had loads of comments. I really appreciate them. All the interactions have been absolutely great. I've had a lot of personal messages from either scouts that have been involved with West Ham, scouts that know about West Ham, or people that have arranged for scouts to come and, and scout kids. Basically, there's been lots and lots of stories surrounding the West Ham scouting system. Um, as I say, it's a little bit worse than we thought. I reported the other day that there were five uh, scouts currently at uh, at West Ham. Um I also reported that I think Brentford have 30. Um, I've already told you about Southampton, Leicester, uh, things like that. We don't have five. We have one first team scout. And his name is Jordan Miles. Now, I'm not here to dig Jordan Miles out. We need Jordan Miles more than ever. Without Jordan Miles, we might not be looking at any players at all. In fact, Jordan Miles is the Obi-Wan Kenobi of the scouting system at West Ham. He is our possibly our only hope. Um, but as one, I've been pointed out, and thank you to the people that have given me the information, pointed out to an article in The Athletic uh, quite recently where they quoted Karen Brady as saying we had seven scouts. Um, also, somebody pointed me out to Sam Incasol's article. Sam Incasol has been running this as well. So please go and have a look and search for him on Twitter and have a look at his. Um, I, and if anything, I'm a little bit behind on the news on this one. But we do only have one scout. We did have five. One of them was Husselos's son. He got let go at the same time as Husselos. The other one, one of the others, was Pellegrini's son. Clearly, he got let go as well. Now, this shows the folly of having a director of football and a scouting system that is so entwined with a manager. So we now find ourselves in a position where it's all got to be done again. Basically, David Boyes, David Boyes, David Moyes has got to build the scouting structure but he's got to build it on a pittance because as we discussed in the video the other day, we are not ready to pay money. We're not paying serious money. We're not matching the money that our competitors are paying. And my reason for me bringing this to your attention is I think we're in serious trouble. Karen Brady in her interview the other day alluded to the fact that we spend money. We spend money on players. We do. We spent big money on Sebastian Haller. Felipe Anderson was big money. But if I were to put it, I'm a builder, if I were to put it on a housing analogy, we have a very, very posh roof and terrible foundations and no floorboards. Because I think if we're cutting costs at the scouting and academy level, and the and bearing in mind the scouting, the name, the Academy of Football has become a farce, by the way. But if we are cutting costs to that extent on that, I'm pretty damn sure we're cutting costs everywhere. I think asset stripping is a, probably not an accurate term, but I think we are trying to save in every single area of the company. And I say company because it is being run like a budget company. For an industry of £190 million turnover, what is going on now? Uh, I'll say a club of £190 million turnover. The penny pinching that is going on is nothing short of scandalous. But I, I don't Stop there with the disturbing news of my friends, unfortunately. Um, it appears that because we only have Jordan Miles as a scout, we are relying on two agents to do our scouting for us. The first one is Barry Silkman. And the second one is Will Salthouse. Now, they are they are agents, and, and, and in many respects, I would blame the policy of the club that is happening. They have been charged with getting us players. We have a bit of a problem at the moment is because of what I'm telling you now and what I've been telling you for the last two or three days might come as a surprise to some, might come as new information to others, might be totally expected to a lot of you. But this is an open secret in football. All the other clubs, all the other players, all the other agents know the situation at West Ham. We're struggling to get players in. We don't have any scouts. And David Moyes is quite meticulous in his scouting. So he's walked into a situation whereby the players haven't been scouted and he wants anyone that has been scouted 
He what needs to go and see and give the final rubber stamp. Not a policy that I particularly argue with. I think you should send one scout out, two scout outs. I think you should set, scout a player four or five times. Then the man, and then he gets recommended to the manager. The manager has a final look. I'm not arguing with the policy here. I think it's a good one. Uh, the point is David Moyes has no time to go and look at players. And we seem to be in a situation where players don't want to sign for us. Um, I may be proved wrong. I hope I'm proved wrong. But I don't think this is going to be a fruitful transfer window. And I think because of the policy, because of the policy of recruitment, because of the policy of lack of investment in scouts, because of the policy of sacking Pellegrini meant we lost two of our senior scouts. Because of the policy of having a director of football, that when the manager gets sacked, the director of football gets sacked. I think it's going to be very, very difficult for us to sign any players. It's not impossible for Moyes to do it. We brought in Darren Randolph. Now, here's the thing. Earlier on, I told you, that we were, we were asking for Will Sorthouse and for Barry Silkman to do our scouting. Will Sorthouse is one of his clients, is Darren Randolph. Another one of his clients is Robert Snodgrass. Will Sorthouse, his agency, which I believe is called USM, they also sponsor the West Ham ladies team. I know for many of you this is not new news. Other people have brought this to your attention, other articles. But it's new news to me. And because new news to me, I'm going to share it with you. Because I think there's a massive conflict of interests here. Are we using agents? Well, firstly, an agent is not a scout. An agent, by his very nature, is compromised. An agent will, will want to offer you a certain player. And surely it's advantageous for that agent to offer you a player that's on his books. Because he's going to get paid for it. He's going to get money for it. An agent may not be able to spot the best centre forward in the Brazilian league or, or, or anything like that. That's what a scout does. The scout will know the best goalkeeper at Tranmere Rovers or whatever. The agent necessarily doesn't. The agent will just recommend his players that are on his books. This has a little whiff of Sam Allardyce and Mark Curtis situation. If you remember when we had five or six players on the books who shared the same agent as Sam Allardyce. But I don't want to get too conspiratorial with it because it's more urgent than that. I think because of the situation we're in, we're struggling to get players in. And I look at it and I think, my goodness, David Moyes must have been very, very desperate to take this job, bearing in mind the situation he's walking into. He seems to um, be a bit of a ditherer. And that's no problem if you're if you're at Everton and you've been working there 11 years. I think you can take your time. If you're working under a chairman like Bill Kenwright, who you've known for years and you've worked under for years, I think you can take your time. I think if you've got trusted scouts like Steve Round, who have been at Everton for a number of times, and you've trusted his word, and he turns around and says, David, I've seen this player. He's absolutely magnificent. David said, Steve, I trust you. We need a right back, mate. Let's get the guy in. This is not a situation he's having now. I, I, I am severely worried. I am very, very worried that this example of the amateurish way, and as I said, car boot sale market store way, that we are running the football club is mirrored in other aspects of the club. And if it is, we are in serious trouble because basically it would appear that we are possibly the worst run club in the Premier League. I mentioned on other videos before, I think we're the biggest joke club since Cardiff City under Vincent Tam were in the Premier League. These are really, really worrying times. And I look at what's going on with the club. I look at what's going on with the propaganda coming out for the club. And it's and I look at the march that's happening uh, tomorrow. I'm going to upload this immediately. It's what was the t it's it's about what's the time now? It's about it's, it's mid morning. It's mid morning on Friday. We've got the march tomorrow. And I look and I think if if what you wanted to do was put more people on that march, they've done it. Gold Sullivan and Brady have put more people on that march. I reckon they've added at least five hundred. To the march, the protest. I think you say march, it's a protest. I think the club is in serious, serious trouble. We need to sign players immediately. We need to sort out there's, there's all even if even if we started from today, in terms of recruiting players, in terms of getting the scouting network done, this is not something that can be done before the end of January. This, these are long term projects. They've been here ten years. Ten years. You look at a ten year plan, this should have been put in motion. A couple of years ago, or maybe it was 2016, whenever it was, shortly after, anyway, whatever, sorry, shortly after the Burnley protests, 
David Sullivan said he was going to overhaul the scouting system. The video is there for all to see. He said he was going to get an analytics department. He promised many things. He's not done it. He's not done it. This protest could happen. He may well promise more things. I just don't think you can believe that much of this is going to happen. I, I'm real. I, I am seriously concerned. Um, in the David Gold interview, uh, which I covered, I alluded to the fact that he was hopeful of us bridging the gap between the top teams because Manchester United and Arsenal were doing worse. I think um, that well, that's looking up. Let's look down. I I think if we survive, it will be in spite of what's going on at the club, not because of it. I think if we survive, it will be because Norwich, Bournemouth, Aston Villa, whoever, are worse than us. I think it will be a lucky escape. We need David Moyes at the moment. Might not wanted him. I've got to be honest, I didn't want him. We need him. We need him to pull things around. We, we This is not about glory anymore. It's about gritting your teeth. This is about clean sheets. Apparently, David Moyes is going to overhaul the scouting in the summer. It may well be too little too late. And, and I'm sorry for bringing you these depressing videos. I, I really am. If you look to my video on Tuesday, I'm trying to have fun. I'm trying to go light-hearted on this stuff. And I want to do this now to get it out there because news has just hit me now. And I get to the weekend, I want to concentrate on the game. That's what I want to do. Um, want to get in there. Um, we've got CPR training down the boats, as you know. Want to get the CPR training done. Get as many people trained up in that vital skill as possible. Um, want to have a burger. Want to have a couple of beers. Want to get into the ground. I want to support the team and hopefully cheer on a win. And that's what I want to concentrate. I don't want to talk about this stuff during the videos over the weekend. Um, but worrying, worrying times, my friends. Worrying times. Right. Uh, funny enough, the sun's just gone in, which is an excellent time to finish the video.